All right, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, I've had an introduction, so I'll give everyone a chance uh, who's running a few minutes late to catch up to us. So I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning for the S2A process, bridging the supplier to OEM gap, finding your answers easily with QDM. This uh, webinar is going to be focusing on supplier quality assurance and how to communicate with suppliers using quality data and quality metrics. Quick agenda for today. We're going to be doing a brief company introduction. I'm having Jamie Dutton doing uh, two small use cases. They're kind of fun and let you know how this SQA method can automate your supplier quality assurance. Then we're going to be moving over and letting Oliver tell us a little bit more about the technical details of how the, the, the tools and the process itself work, some of the, the nuts and bolts. And then we have some Q&A left at the end in case you have any questions. Now, speaking of questions, if you have any that come up throughout the presentation, please use your interface on the right and go ahead and submit those as they, as they come up and come into your head. We're going to try to answer them as we're going through the presentation, so to make this a dialogue. And if we don't get a chance to answer your question right when it comes up, we'll, of course, get to it at the end. We'll be able to answer all questions today. So just go ahead and stay with us for a few minutes afterwards, and uh, we'll make sure to get to all of them. Now, I had a promise to put my picture in here. The presenters said that they wouldn't have their pictures if I didn't have mine. So that's me. I'm Ben Reese. I'll be your moderator today. I'm with uh, DCS Marketing. Just to get you started up, some of you who might not be as familiar with DCS and our product suite, we, uh, DCS focuses on two primary forms of quality assurance, on production variation control and predictive variation analysis. So we deal with reducing variation in manufacturing. Today we're focusing on our quality data management side, which uses QDM. QDM is a modular system that consists of a lot of smaller programs that can be scaled or linked up to create a larger system throughout your global enterprise or at specific small locations. So really, whether you're a two-person contract manufacturer and just need a couple reports or need to communicate with somebody using some metrics, or you've got 15 plants across the entire world and want to see real-time quality metrics, QDM is kind of a system that's very helpful for automating all of those processes. And of course, 3DCS, the product suite that we're uh, fairly well known for, which works in the CAD world, allowing you to optimize your designs for assembly and manufacturability. So I've got here our closed loop. I'm not going to spend much time on this today. The big thing I want to point out here is that if you take a quick look at the blue boxes, tolerance analysis, measurement plan, inspection, actual data. The, the big thing here is that this isn't anything new to anyone joining us today. I, every company we work with already does this. They do their analysis, they do their design, they determine their measurement plans, then they inspect all of their parts, and they work with the actual data, analyzing it, creating your reports, root causing, finding any problems in production, and then using that to help optimize their designs further, and of course, logging and archiving it for historical uses. What I want to point out here is that most companies we work with do a lot of this manually. We still work with a lot of companies that are doing manual gd &T, still doing some 2D drawings, doing measurement plans using for their inspection, using all the output files from their inspection devices, having to sort through this data in Excel. You've got 230 columns, 800 lines of data from all of your output files, and just having to try to make heads or tails of all of this data that's coming in. So really the big thing we're talking about today is not replacing any processes or changing processes in any of our customer companies or any of our clients. We don't think any of our customers are doing anything wrong. We don't want to tell you that because you're not. The big thing, though, is that a lot of this being done manually means you're spending a lot of time just crunching numbers and working in Excel and piling through data. And we'd like to show you how you could automate that process and save yourself a lot of time and spend that time working on your analysis or working on solving the problems that you really need to do and not dealing with all the stacks and stacks of data and text files. Two presenters today are Jamie Dutton and Oliver Gladius. They're actually both part of our QDM implementation, validation, and design team. Uh, Jamie Dutton is a DCS, Dimensional Applications Engineer, and has been with us for a number of years. If you've called in for support, especially on our QDM or GDM side, You've probably spoken to Jamie or Oliver. 
Oliver does a lot of our um, initial implementations and installations and works with a lot of experts in training and uh, learning how to, to use and work with the system, which is why we brought them in today. They do a lot of work helping automate quality processes. And that's really what we want to focus on today, is how to automate your quality of uh, data sharing and communication. So that way you're not having to deal with large stacks of output files. So at this time, I'm actually going to pass the presentation over to Jamie Dutton. And he's going to take us through two short use cases to kind of show you how uh, supplier quality assurance and how a uh, small tool, uh, module QDM, standalone tool, can be used to automate these processes. All right, Jamie, if you want to go ahead and show your screen. Thank you, Ben. Can you see the screen? Yeah, that looks good. <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll start with a familiar story. Uh, anyone who's in quality has probably run into this numerous times. You're having some issues buying off on an assembly, and you're going to have to wade through all your individual samples of the subcomponents to find out where the problem lies. But now you've got a mountain of paperwork that results from receiving hundreds of pages of text reports from different suppliers, and they're all in different formats. As an OEM engineer, you're going to need to decipher all these different formats. And some of the pain involved in doing that is that your naming conventions aren't always followed. Some features may not be measured at the correct locations. And some features that are required for measurement may be missing entirely. So imagine that you are the quality manager at a large OEM, and these are your problems. Your team has taken its time to create your GD&T for all the parts that you're manufacturing. You have your datums and your tolerances within all your callouts. Now from the GD&T, you've identified each critical to quality characteristic necessary, and you've probably bought off on your hard check fixtures that are now at your suppliers. From this previous work, you now have a roadmap for inspecting the parts. And this allows you to create a feature roadmap for checking all the quality of the uh, critical quality characteristics. Next, your suppliers are kicking off their trial runs, their batch runs. They're going to be concerned with their just-in-time runs for lean manufacturing and getting you the data a little bit later on. But there's going to be differences in how they measure. Are they going to be measuring in other locations than you specified? What kind of devices are they using to do the measurements? Is it digital metrology? Or is it something that has only handheld accuracy? Some teams are using your measurement plan but we know that sometimes they have to customize it, make their own adjustments. Some may need to measure with other devices. So oftentimes your measurement plan is varied due to interpretation of others. Because of the nature of the parts, different measurement devices have to be used throughout certain processes. Some examples are are obviously a CMM, um, vision systems like Perceptron, laser gauges, white light, red light, blue light technology, handheld. Yes, Ben? Oh, and isn't it that, I mean, if you've got one part coming from different suppliers, you might be using different inspection devices at each one of those suppliers, even though it might be the same part. Right. You might have supplier A that puts it on the same part check fixture that supplier B has, and they use a different measurement method. So some of their measurements may not quite line up between A and B. And you're looking for that correlation. 
each lab has its own inventory of devices to measure your parts with. So now when you're trying to chase down the quality, you receive this. A whole table full of different types of file formats. When you're managing many parts and many suppliers, you end up receiving countless file formats to deal with. It's very time consuming. This can take many days and weeks to compile it. Um, you're trying to amass all of this information into large spreadsheets oftentimes with dozens or more, probably hundreds of rows, thousands of columns of data while you're trying to aggregate these into statistics that you can use in the decision making process. And oftentimes you're trying to use complicated software to do that and you're getting frustrated to analyze it without, without any graphical presentation. Now this causes a lot of headaches because now you've taken all this time to analyze that data and your parts are already beyond that point. They're in the assembly stages. You're having delays making, uh, making your <clears throat> decisions on that data because they've already gotten past that. It's getting into a warranty and repair recall type of situation now because you haven't had time to root cause the problem before it got out of the supplier's hands. We'll just give you a second to look at this slide. So but basically what we're trying to tell you here is we can help you cut out the time that your process takes so you can automate and make your decisions quickly. And as the comic shows, I mean, oftentimes we, we have a hard time root causing the exact problem. We can find issues within our system, but finding the exact problem that's causing our issue uh, can sometimes be a whole challenge in of itself. So what, QD, or what SQA can do to change that process is allow you to communicate with your OEM much more effectively. It's going to reduce the time and effort needed to communicate the measurements that they're being requested. So we'll tell the story a second way. Again, you're the quality manager at a large OEM and you're facing some problems with your assemblies. Your team's created your GD&T for all the parts. You have all the proper datums and callouts. Now what you need is for your partners to follow the measurement plan. Your measurement plan is developed into a nice little roadmap, but we're going to take it a step farther. Now your measurement plan can be input into a template in QDM. Take, for instance, the OEM can author all the determined critical to quality characteristics and put it into the QDM roadmap. Then it's easy for them to publish it and to share it with the supplier. The supplier can follow along and populate it with their measurement data. Now your supplier goes about running their part runs, maybe a new batch. And now they can inspect and measure per your measurement plan that was communicated to them. They may have multiple suppliers for some parts. You'll want them using the same plan globally. The supplier handles their own raw data, but they can use QDM to automatically handle limitless data formats. Instead of having to send you all that raw data to wade through, stack up on your desk, now they just upload that data into the QDM template, use the SQA module, and they put this data right into 
the roadmap you created that becomes a container for the measurements they created. Then they can send you back that populated template and you'll see what they measured. You'll quickly be able to tell if measurement plan was successful or if some of the characteristics were just measured some of the time. So essentially you have to report and you can automatically glance through it and give it some pass-fail scores because you'll be able to see which parts are out of spec and hone in on the problem areas. Now seen here is a larger image of a populated report with some of the, some of the points out of spec, the red dots. So this, is, this illustrates how you can open up the report that was sent back to you and quickly approve or reject those measurements. All right, let's summarize. Before, suppliers could be sending in all different formats. Now, the standard format is for all supplier communication. Before, the quality requirements could be unclear, often created by the supplier. Now you have clear communication of quality requirements from the OEM. Or OEMs are looking for specific formats of inspection outputs. Now suppliers can use available inspection devices and software and input them in the QDM. Before, suppliers often needed to go back and remeasure parts to check OEM specified locations. After, suppliers can decide on inspection devices routines to cover all the requirements in the first pass. <clears throat> Before, you had time-consuming analysis and the OEM had to specify pass and fail criteria based on statistics. Afterwards, now you have a pass and fail criteria embedded in the template for instant data validation. Before, you had data and statistics that need to be manually input into reports for decision making afterwards. Now you have a re received the report in a decision making format already. Before, you had to manually and store and archive your measurements and even send them over to your OEM. Now you can archive and publish it back to the OEM and they can load it into their QDM web system directly. Now I'm going to pass this presentation over to our application expert, Oliver Gladius. All right. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Uh, thanks for the nice uh, presentation. So uh, I'm going to take a deep dive and I'm going to go to the technical details of uh, our SQA process. and. Uh, uh, to also summarize the SQA process to uh, be for the supplier or for the OEM. So, so Oliver, since you're going to be diving into the technical details, why don't you start us off by answering a question. So we, we talked about this control template being sent to the supplier so they can use it to determine their measurement plans. Um, can you tell me just for a second, real quick, um, how the control template points are going to be communicated to suppliers' inspection equipment? Can it be output in various formats? Can you answer that real quick? So yeah, uh, so when you uh, send this uh, control plan uh, template, so uh, what they have is they have a graphical representation of all the XYZ points and also the IJK vector points. So what the supplier has is he has a list of uh, critical to quality features which the OEM wanted to be measured and also like exact uh, XYZ and uh, IJK coordinates for all these points. So uh, it's easy for the supplier to get his uh, own list to make his uh, measurement routine uh, for the measurements of the parts. Does it also include the vectors? Yes, yes, it does. Uh, so it includes the IJK vectors. So uh, so it is more easy for you to uh, spell, uh, 
give the data to the uh, supplier saying, okay, so uh, in this point, like for example, for this feature, I'm more concerned about the uh, I vector. So uh, you can ignore the J, K, J, J and the K vector, or you can like measure all three, but uh, what I am more concerned about is the I vector. So you can uh, uh, transfer the vector based data as well. So I'm going to start this uh, slide. So uh, this slide uh, uh, is about uh, uh, what would, what would uh, uh, QA system mean for a supplier. So as a supplier, what, a, uh, what he would be getting from the OEM and what he would be uh, uh, making use of this SQA process. So, uh, so the first step is, uh, so I'm going to talk about the inputs. So the first input is a QDM template from the OEM. So by, by meaning template, so template is a, a QDM document uh, which, which has uh, all the measurement points and the measurement uh, uh, routines on it. So what, what you have is you have a list of uh, all the critically, uh, uh, critical to quality points on different pages on uh, different uh, measurement plan. And they also have the IJK and the XYZ coordinates in it. And the other uh, thing about this is, so the OEM, uh, so I know like there are different OEMs, they are more concerned about uh, different uh, uh, statistics. So some OEM are just on the spe spec limit. So if you are in the spec limit, it's a pass. If not, you're okay. So some OEMs, as it's a batch of a uh, lot of uh, components to be manufactured, they are more concerned about the CP or CPK, PP, PPK. So it totally depends on the OEM. So what it gives is, the, it gives the OEM to control what their statistics are and they can also give like, okay, I am a, um, a OEM who, are, who is more concerned about the CP and anything uh, uh, below 1.67 is not good. So, so, so you, you can make decisions uh, based on that and all these statistics to the critical to quality points to the measurement data to the uh, XYZ coordinates and the IJK uh, vector. Everything can be sco stored in this uh, template and this can be passed over to uh, the uh, supplier. So, so when the supplier So when the supplier opens this uh, template, so what he sees is, so he has a list of features, and he also has like a good graphical representation of all the points which he has to measure, and also like the exact uh, XYZ coordinates, and also the exact uh, IJK vectors for every single point which is needed to be measured. Can he, can he output those from the template then? Yeah, we have a, a whole list of options to be uh, which we can use to export it. So we can like export in different types of text formats or CSV formats or XML formats. So we can uh, uh, the supplier can export it in uh, any type of format he wants. So uh, so he has the uh, the template from the OEM. So so once he looks at the template, so he can like uh, make uh, decisions. Okay, so th this is the part I'm going to manufacture, and these are the points the OEM are really focused on. So based on that, uh, what he can do is he can create this uh, measurement routine. So what he can do is like once the parts are manufactured, he can like create. Uh, okay, he can export out a list of all these features from the uh, template, and he make he can make a measurement routine, and he can like use any uh, kind of measurement inspection device. Uh, he has. So uh, one thing about uh, about this uh, SQA is you don't have to uh, 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 output in any specific format. So let's say you use a perceptron machine or a gap gun or a blue light scanner or uh, any different type of machine. But now the thing is like you can export in its own native format. May it be a press file or a RPF file or a CSV file, text file. So you can like export it in any, any format and uh, what you have is like so you when you have these two, you have the template from the OEM, you have all these exported files from the uh, inspection device. So these are the two inputs which you need for the SQA. So what happens is when you have these two, you open the SQA software, you open the template which is sent by the OEM. So this template, uh, as you can see, uh, you can see all the empty charts in there. So because it's all blank, because it's sent by the OEM and uh, you're uh, supposed to fill it up, right? So what happens is, like when you import these text files, so what uh, SQA does is it 
automatically populates all these charts with the text file results. So that's the first thing you would notice. And the second is it also calculates all the statistics and uh, spec limits and all the criteria which, which is required to be presented in the template automatically in a fraction of a second. So he uses a, a number of translators, basically. Yeah, so, so yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for reminding me of that. So what happens is when you bring it in, so we have like a whole list of translators which comes as a part of the SQA offer. So you have like translators for a list of like from different inspection devices like Perceptron or a Gap Gun or CMM like a PC Demus or Metrolog or Zeiss or Hollow. So, so there are like a whole list of translators which you can uh, make use of and you can bring any type of text files without change of format or a change of uh, any data at all. So once you bring that in, so what happens is what you notice is uh, you have the, uh, all the charts which has been filled in with all these uh, data in those. And also the second thing you notice is all the statistics are calculated based on the requirements of the OEM. And the third thing is it's all in the exact same position where the OEM wanted to be. And, in, and also like you have like these reports can be created in different pages, right? So every page will have the exact same way uh, the graph is positioned, the charts are positioned in the same way how the OEM wanted it. And the next thing you see is it's also like color coded. So the moment you bring these text files in, all these charts are color coded. So what you get out of that is the uh, supplier, you can like quickly go through the report to different pages and you can like decide, okay, so I have met the requirements for these points and I have not met met the requirement for the others. So you can like quickly make decisions based on that. And also like uh, there's a quick uh, thing about, uh, uh, you can also make decisions. Okay, so uh, uh, I've made like, uh, so these are the critical to quality points and I've uh, measured everything. So you, you can make sure that he didn't miss any points during his measurement phase. So once he's comfortable with that, so what he can do is, so the next step is sending this report to the OEM. So once the template is brought in, you populate the data, then you make a report, then the next step is sending it. So output, we can we have a list of output ways. We can uh, get it out of uh, the SQ way. So the most popular methods are you can export the GDZ file, which is our native format. You can export it to the OEM. They can open it in their GDM. If not, you can use, you can export a PDF file. You can send a PDF file, or you can uh, export it as an HTML document, or uh, any other different formats, like uh, if you want, you can ma even make a PowerPoint presentation out of it and you can send it to your OEM. So there are like whole different par formats, you can send it to the OEM and the OEM receives it in like a fraction of a second. So to quickly summarize this page, so the inputs are, you get the template from the OEM and using the template, you uh, decide on the critical to quality features, you measure those and you get the text files out of the CM machine. You combine these both to get the GDM uh, SQA report and send this SQA report in any different format to the OEM. Okay. So the next slide uh, I'm going to talk as a quality engineer uh, at OEM. So. Okay. So this. Uh, so when you look at this. So so what happens? So. The supplier sends the report uh, and the OEM gets it. So the first thing the uh, quality engineer <laughs> sees is like he opens the report and he sees like everything perfectly positioned in the way he wanted it and it's all standardized throughout different customers. So it's nothing new for him and he doesn't have to like uh, decode like what is, what is the supplier trying to tell me. So this is all in the standardized format which he wanted to and it's all in the screen. Uh, in the screen. So uh, what he does is he, he opens up. He opens the uh, uh, report and uh, he sees like all these charts are color coded and all these uh, uh, critical to quality points are being measured. So what he can do is he can quickly flip through the pages and he can confirm that all these points are being measured first. And second thing is even after they're measured, they have like uh, uh, reached this quality requirements. So there might be like most of it has required like attain the uh, spec limit is uh, specified. Some might have uh, beyond the border and few might have failed. But now he can like make uh, quality decisions uh, on, on based on this report and then he can like say, okay, I'm going to approve this batch or reject this batch based on the report. So the, the main thing about this is it's a really quick and efficient way to like filter out or sort different uh, failed and passed criteria throughout the report. 
and it saves, saves a lot of time and also uh, it's a very uh, good uh, organized uh, way to maintain quality. Okay, so a quick summary about the uh, processes which the OEM and the supplier go through in this SQA uh, process. So if you see, uh, we have a diagonal line. So on the left, we have the process done by the OEM, and on the right, we have like what the supplier does. So I'm going to start from the top uh, top part of the slide. So it's a create template from measurement plan. So so as you know, uh, so the OEM is going to create a template from the measurement plan. Uh, like mentioning about all the critical to quality features, their locations and their vectors. So this measurement plan is to the supplier who receives it, who looks at, okay, so these are the points which the OEM is more concerned about. I'm going to make a measurement routine based on that. So they're going to make a measurement routine. They manufacture, they use this measurement routine to measure all the parts. And once these parts are measured, they load these text files or any different type of file formats back to the uh, measurement plan template sent by the OEM. And once this template is populated with these uh, measurement points, it becomes a fully completed report, which is sent back to the OEM. And the OEM can use that template for their uh, decision making. And they can, so once this report is received by the OEM, they can uh, make their decision for that batch and also make decisions how this report can be changed or enhanced for their future, future batches to be processed. Okay, so we are in our final slide. Uh, so this slide, uh, we're going to revisit this. Uh, you know, ben uh, gave a quick introduction about this uh, closed loop process of our uh, product suites. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick uh, uh, so go through of our closed loop process with uh, the specific products we use to uh, attain the closed loop process. One thing to note here is that um, we, of course, are going to suggest the use of our products or solutions. But at each point in here, um, especially like if you're doing data analysis or tolerance analysis in the beginning, um, you can use 3 dcs for it. There are other products you can use for it as well. But we're trying to show the, the automation and connection between all of your processes that you're already doing, how you can automate the connections between them and connect them back into each other. Thanks, Ben. I also wanted to mention that that uh, I know like all these companies, the OEMs or the suppliers, they always do this process. But the thing is, uh, it's always pain for uh, getting the data out of one process and like inserting it to the next uh, part of their process. So uh, what I'm trying to show you is how our product suite can help you to like automate it uh, in a quicker and easier way without uh, any uh, loop uh, holes. Okay, so the first uh, product is uh, the 3DCS, which is our tolerance analysis product. So uh, this is our this is a, a variation analysis tool. So any any product part we manufacture or any assembly uh, we uh, create. So we uh, so design phase is a very important phase. So what happens is when we, so we have this CAD part even before manufacturing. So we put this CAD part and we do some tolerance analysis and variation analysis and th this analysis would give you a good idea on uh, where these parts can fail or like wh what are the critical points which has to be focused on so that uh, the total assembly or the total part will be will be uh, in their uh, best quality so this uh, so what we have do is in 3d cs we use this Monte Carlo simulation to simulate uh, this manufacturing process in our uh, systems to uh, find, okay, so these are the critical points and these are the points to be monitored more uh, during our manufacturing process. So once the simulation is done, so, so basically during the talent analysis, you're using your software or your different tools and systems to find your critical to quality characteristics. You need to find your, your, your critical points that need to be measured later on. So you're basically doing your, your Monte Carlo analysis or your, your stack up studies to try to find out which particular points on your, your product you're going to have to focus in on to make sure that they're going to match up and, and meet your uh, uh, quality metric standard. Yes, Ben. So uh, 3DCS uh, can do a whole lot of stuff, but uh, uh, I'm like right now focused only on the SQA. So uh, I'm going to just focus on uh, the critical to quality features. So once the critical quality features is exported out of 3DCS, what happens? You can automatically directly import those back to your QDM 3D. So this is what the OEM can do. So they can like directly import this on a click of a button, where it automatically goes to QDM. It automatically puts the measurement plan, ergonomically plays it, plays it in different uh, uh, 
pages and uh, a measurement plan is ready in like a few seconds. So once it is done, then uh, the OEM can go through different pages and then they can make decisions. Okay, so is it still a critical to quality? Do I have to hide it or do I have to like add some more? You have like all those options in QDM 3D where the OEM can add more points, delete a few, and they can also then, then the other thing about that is you can give your statistics. Okay, these are the statistics I need to be followed during the manufacturing or measurement. So all these can be done using QDM 3D. And once the measurement plan is done, once the template is ready, the template can be then forwarded to the supplier who then opens it, looks at it using his QDM software. Okay, so this is the part I have manufactured and these are the key points which have to be measured. And he's going to have both, both these on his hand and he's going to make a measurement routine based on that. So once this is manufactured, okay, I'll make sure that these will be uh, perfect uh, to the point, uh, to the statistics what the OEM wanted. Okay, so next step is, so the suppliers manufacture the part, measure the part, so they then they have all different reports and different text files and RTF files. So all these files in a click of a button can be imported uh, immediately into the QDM template, uh, the measurement plan template which the OEM sent you and in a, in a, in a second it's going to turn into a the um, SQA report. So you have these uh, measurement plan templates which has turned into an actual report which can be sent back to the OEMs uh, for their future analysis. So once you send back to the OEMs, you have two things uh, which, you, which you can do. So one thing is you can like make quality decisions based on that. You can approve the batch. You can reject the parts. You can like send it for rework, all these can be done. So that is one part of it. And the other part of it is you can also use this uh, quality data, the actual data, the shop flow data, to uh, use it for your future simulations in your uh, 3DCS. So currently, like 3DCS, when you do it for the first time, you don't have any shop flow data. So what you do is you use the Monte Carlo simulation to do a theoretical analysis of your points and all the critical features, but uh, what happens now is you have a more realistic data from your uh, inspection uh, device which you can like make use of it, give it back to 3D CS and ask them, okay, use this data to do your future simulations and that will give you a, a even more realistic uh, results. So that is the closed root process um, and uh, I think I'm done with my slides, so I'm going to pass it to uh, Ben. No Thank problem. You. Thank you so much. So. Um, I might just go ahead and just bring us over to the Q&A slides. There we go. Uh, so as you saw there, for product-wise, in order to really take uh, full advantage of this QDM SQA, you just have a, a, a small QDM 3D system at the OEM side and a QDM SQA client on the supplier side, which are both inexpensive tools that you can use to communicate each other, and they're very easy to, to use and install as they're both node locked. So you just go ahead and get a license, put it on your uh, workstation, your computer, whichever um, locations you have it at, and you run it on that machine. So it's very easy to take advantage of it, and uh, uh, actually a really great tool for using reporting and quality metrics to communicate back and forth between suppliers, customers, project teams, um, and anyone else that might need to be able to uh, talk in quality terms with you. So at this time, I'm just going to open the floor for a couple minutes, see if we have any, uh, any questions remaining. We w didn't want to take up too much of your time today. So we made sure this was kind of uh, short and sweet. So at this time, we're going to be on for about uh, 10 more minutes. I'm going to mute our microphone. And if anyone has any additional questions, here's a good question for you, actually. Can you compare two different suppliers for tolerances? So say I get um, this. Could you tell me a little bit about that, Oliver? Yes. So when the uh, OEM receives the data, so they can get like different data sets from this for different customers or uh, suppliers. So when I mean data set, it may be like a batch of 50 or 100 parts. So they have this uh, bunch of uh, text files or the report itself. So what you can do is you have something called overlaying. So what you can do is you can compare both these data sets so that all these charts can be like compared side to side or overlaid on each other and all these uh, statistics can be compared automatically. All right, thank you, Oliver. So when you bring in, so you're basically when you're bringing in your reports and your data sets from two different suppliers, you can actually bring them both into the same report yes. and make a comparator report. Make a comparator report. You can export out uh, Excel files which can compare both the data, or uh, you can also like 
get the statistics and you can compare both the statistics side by side. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very easy to compare um, tolerances and data coming in from two different suppliers or from multiple different sources. Yes. And the beauty of it is you don't even have to be, have the same uh, type of inspection device. As long as the measurement plan is uh, sent to them properly and as long as they fo follow the XYZs or the feature names, uh, you don't even have to uh, have the exact same device. They can measure it in any type of device, but when you bring it in, it's all going to um, overlay on the same chart. All right, we have about five or six more minutes in case anyone has additional questions. I want to thank everyone for joining us today and for your attention. We really appreciate it. Um, we hope we were able to cover uh, the, the idea of uh, the product itself, QDM SQA, and hopefully show you a little bit about how some of the ways uh, manufacturing is automating these different systems that we've traditionally done manually. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to have uh, Jamie just do a quick demo of the software for all those who still might be on. Um, otherwise, for those of you who are receiving this as a recording, this is for your benefit in case you want to take a look and see what the actual software would look like. Jamie, take it away. Okay. Beautiful Thursday morning. A little bit of sunshine in Michigan for once. Oh, yeah. Instead of all the snow. Don't say snow. Oh, sorry. It's still sorry. not too late for snow. <laughs> it is snow. missing you. Oh, really? <laughs> all right, what are you opening up here? I'm opening up what could be an example of the uh, <clears throat> measurement plan template that an OEM might construct and send to their supplier so they can use that in SQA. Um, right here is an index page showing some of the measurements around one area of this B pillar up on the top. And then from the middle of the product down to the bottom on the second index page. And then you'll see comparator charts that can show the graphical trend of the samples that are not populated yet throughout the graph pages within the report. Each of these, yeah, still can never do full screen during a webinar. Uh, each of these can then, let me just make one of these really big. Each of these has X, Y, Z for your position coordinate, your spec limits, and they can give you back your IJK as well. And I can see at the bottom there is where my color coding would be for, for my specification. Right. You've got, um, you've got a placeholder for a, a red, yellow, green color coding here, right there where it says measure name. And you've got a legend that, you can, uh, that the OEM can specify if they want it set to the, the PP capability. Uh, the CPK capability, the spec limits, the mean, which whatever they want to choose to focus on, they can 
specify that right here from the display characteristics. Here's the criteria, and that can change based on who they want to supply it. Um, but now to actually demonstrate inputting, inputting the results into it, it's just a few clicks going through importing data Let's say you want to actually get this up to um, your last 30 pieces. You've got the file translator picked for this PC Demos to chew up all these RTF files and send them back to the OEM. Right now, a macro is running and data grabbers go in through all these pieces. It's already on number five. So it's just going to take a few seconds of talking while while the uh, that all SQA comes. module is going ahead and importing the data. The raw data is coming from your supplier as I'm talking about it. And data grabber and the translators, those are all packaged as part of the QDM SQA or your QDM 3D system. They come as part of that. Right. This isn't. This is not an additional purchase or anything. This is part of the module that we're speaking about right now. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, so yeah. now all I need to do is replace the data, the one part that was used to make the charts at the OEM, and replace that, reset the chart to zero, so I get my 30 samples. So now we see parts that are in spec and parts that are out of spec right off the get-go. You can see that the uh, this one didn't land within its spec limits, the diameter here. So you can make your decision based on changing your process at the supplier to correct that right before you rerun your parts. And you can save this now. You can export whatever type you need, or you can save it. Now this file is ready to send off to the OEM. Or you can print it out as a PDF. Just a pre PDF okay. printer. I mean, you can use Adobe. Yep, yep. No big deal. So that that's your report right there. That, it took, what, like a minute and a half to pull in 30 parts, create a report, do a little customization, and like, out of spec. And like Oliver said, that was the slow way too. Yeah, that was the slow way. So there, there's, uh, depending on how big your data sets are, which translator you're using, it'd be a little faster, a little slower, but it generally only takes, you know, 30, 40 seconds total, uh, most most of your reports. I mean, I've seen reports done in seven seconds. You know, they you can do a, a comparator chart between two data sets. They want to see two different suppliers, how they compare out, or they change the process where they're now doing a slightly different assembly, and they want to know how the previous to the current assembly, how they, uh, how they compare. So I've seen seven seconds putting the data together and doing a comparator chart. But that's in our, um, our QDM 3D webinar where we show how to do compar com comparisons and comparator charts. So I'll make sure there's a link to that particular webinar um, in the thank you note as well. All right, well, I just wanted to add that into the recording at the end so you guys could see the live software. Um, I really appreciate everyone coming and joining us today. We're going to sign off. Thank you from everyone here at DCS for joining us, and we appreciate your attendance.